Oh, cool. <laughs> All right. Okay, this is a meeting of the Lemons to School Committee. It is February 6th. We are at the Apple Seeds restaurant. It is 6 p.m. Would you all stand and join me in salute to the flag? Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The committee represents the needs of all public school students and places their interest above all others. We will exercise leadership, adhere to our protocols, and base our decision upon a reasoned assessment of all of the available information. We'll advocate for each of our schools and support high quality public education in Lumister. That is the Lumister School Committee, committee statement, statement, our mission, our mission statement, so to speak. Um, um, it is now, it is now, I heard myself. I heard myself. It is now time for the public forum. Is there anyone here that would like to address the committee? If so, just there's a microphone there. It's the first time this setup is available. And by the way, so the, um, Steve, some of the other meetings that I watched is kind of like muffled. That won't happen now with this new system. Beautiful. So anyone like to address the committee? Just come forward your name for the record, please. Anyone? One last time. If not, anybody from the, uh, anybody register, Chris, pre-register? Okay, if not, we'll close this portion of the meeting. We'll go now on to communications. There are no communications this evening. We'll now move on to student report. Matt? Great, so I'm gonna start with uh, Gold, who can, Gold's presentation, who couldn't be here today because she has COVID, which is unfortunate. Um, so, hello everyone. I hope everyone is doing well. We are in our second month of the new year. CTI began its middle school recruitment visits a couple weeks ago when they visited West Boylston Middle School. Mr. Kine, Mr. Bellotta, and Mr. McKinley had set their visions on Samoset. And finally, the recruitment team visited Skyview in January. The goal is to generate interest among student, among middle school students in our CTI programs. On Saturday, March 4th from 9 a.m. to noon, CTI will be holding their annual open house. This is a great opportunity for eighth grade students and their families to visit CTI, explore shops, and meet our shop instructors. Electrical student Joseph Siciliano became our most recent co-op student when he started at Bratton Industries on Monday, December 12th. Juniors are currently in the purpose of getting paperwork in place to go out on co-op when they become eligible. Carpentry continues its work on the Granite Street edition. In the past couple of weeks, they have lifted all the, the trusses into place, installed them, and framed the remaining part of the roof to tie the addition into the, the existing house. They have installed all the plywood on of the roof deck, and we are getting the roof deck ready to install the asphalt roofing shingles. They have set up staging to install the trim work for the rakes and uh, fa fascias. I, I don't know. Uh, so they were able to complete the additional before uh, Christmas break, um, have it water uh, weather tight. Plumbing has been busy at uh, Johnny Appleseed School working on sink repairs. For the second straight year, the HVAC shop is participating in the Reefs Across America program to help place over 3,000 reefs on our veterans' graves at the Massachusetts Veteran Memorial Center in Winchington, Mass. Health assisting instructor Vicki Poland uh, recently completed a NEASC uh, accredited accreditation um, visit, which will be quite helpful as CTI embarks on its own um, NEACE uh, accreditation process. Principal Bayshant, Assistant Principal Kine, and Guidance Counselors Mary Bellotta and Lori Leverone recently met with the NEASC representatives Bruce Sievers to kick off that process. And now I will do the Lemonster uh, High School Committee report. Um, prep for the LHS Winter Carnival is underway. Every year we have this event in the auditorium. Students have the opportunity to sign up for events and compete against their fellow students. It's always held right before February vacation. I personally will be doing the spin the bat relay race, which I'm really excited to get dizzy and fall on my face. Um, winter sports are still going on with outstanding seasons by basketball, wrestling, hockey, track and cheer. 
The Drama Club is working on their next play, James and the Giant Peach, and they will be competing with it in the upcoming drama festival that starts on March 3rd. The Black Heritage Gala is Wednesday at LHS in honor of Black History Month. To build the culture of the school, there have been a number of initiatives. Students have already done a survey through the school newspaper on the racial climate of the school, and there will be another school committee survey, or sorry, school climate survey for all students this week on a number of other aspects of culture. I have also organized a survey similar to last week based on a discussion from last week's meeting. I asked the student body, uh, quote, in what ways can students network to other schools in order to help each other deliberate slash solve problems within each of their respective schools. Um, some suggested having an advocate from each school within uh, which can meet then meet together on a given day to discuss their school's biggest problems. Uh, others recommended there can be an adult advisor to help organize the discussions. Uh, well, that sorry, that was connected to the last one. So there would be an advisor there at those meetings. Um, and then uh, others recommended the guidance counselor from each school communicating with one another based on what the students tell them. Um, the Blue Devil Nation Club is also planning four events, a dance, a 5K run, a video showing off all the great things LHS students do, a possible staff versus student Olympics. Um, Stump Student Bill of Rights and Responsibilities has been sent to the staff for feedback, which um, in case you don't know what that is, Stump's been organizing a, a very, we're trying to make it as official as possible, a document which would say our our, our rights as students that would can't really be infringed and also that would entail our responsibilities to the staff as well. So it's not just one sided, you know, but um, yeah, it's getting right. We got a new step in that, which is really exciting where the staff is going to um, be looking it over for feedback. Prom will be here before we know it. A pre prom survey has been sent out to parents to fill out. This is required before a student can buy a ticket. Um, and I also wanted to talk to you guys about the new school committee, uh, the new school committee updates and voting rights. Um, basically, there's been there's been an effort to to increase the the rights of the school committee representatives' uh, ability, which is to vote. Um, so I've been sent an email to reach out to con well, not Congress, but to to you know our our, our local representatives and. Um, our senator to just kind of push for that. Um, and yeah, we're we're really hoping that we, we, we can make that a reality. Um, and there is also new committees being added, which I uh, so like there's different categories. Um, uh, let me just, legislative affairs committee, communications committee, resource committee, curriculum committee and finances committee. I'm personally really interested in the curriculum committee. But yeah, it's really exciting to see a lot of new things coming for the uh, Mazer, which is Massachusetts Association of Student Representatives. So that's it. Nice. Thanks, Matt. Any questions? Okay, we'll move on to presentations and discussions. The Woman of Color series. I think we. Um, Ivy was unable. She had a conflict oh. in her schedule, but would love to be before we'll us. And invite her back. Okay. She's wonderful. Northwest School presentation. For those of you that, that haven't met Dan Mulvey, he is uh, the new principal this year. He Last year, he was the assistant principal. He has been doing remarkably well. Proud and happy to have him. I appreciate being here. Thank you very much. And I hope I do remarkably well tonight as well. So, so I do have a, a presentation that I put together. I will, um, I'm happy to answer questions as well. But as I go through, I will have some notes to try to keep myself on track. So um, it's us that have to stay on track. <laughs> well, I can worried. get I can get off that track as well, so I can. I'm not worried about you. <laughs> so um, oh, now and I do have a clicker people. here, so I'm going to do my best. Hopefully, Kyle doesn't have to help me. We'll see if I can. There we go. So one of our first um, school improvements that happened over the summer is right before the school year started. We had a new gym force um, put into Jet Northwest. It was actually like an amazing process. The the gentleman that did it, it was you know something to be seen. It is an art. Nope. Yep. Going in there, seeing them sand it all the way down. You're like, wow, how did that happen? And then the next thing you walk in, you're like, wow, how'd you paint all that stuff already? It was an art. I agree. So um, we were very fortunate that the, the school district was able to um, provide us that right before the school year started. And it was a nice way to start the new school year. So um, <clears throat> then we're having um, rec basketball going on there now. And our PE teacher is looking about getting some type of spring um, recreation going on there um, coming up in the next um, couple of months. So we're going to go to the PTO. 
talk to the school department about that, something he's done in the past. And it's nice that we're getting in this position where we can start bringing some of the things that were happening pre-COVID back into to the buildings. We were fortunate that last year, um, when some of the restrictions were lifted, that we were able to do some school dances and some events that were really well attended. And as we go through some of the events that I'll show tonight, um, I can say that they've been really well attended so far as well. So it's been really nice to see the community wanting to connect and get back in person. And we're trying to provide as many of those opportunities as we can. So um, next slide, um, this is our library. Uh, well, a few pictures of our library. Um, I actually condensed this into one slide. It was more than one slide. We've had several um, pieces of work done to our library this year. Um, we had um, some temporary walls put up in our library to provide spaces for some um, additional programs within our school. Um, when we added on some classrooms this year, they were displaced and the library was a, a place that we identified that we could use, uh, maximize the space to provide um, an area for that, um, for some of those services for some of our specialized populations. It also, we received a grant from the green communities to put in heat pumps in the library. Those are just installed. Um, I think they finished last week uh, with the, um, it was right up to the, the deadline. The group that came in, they were terrific. Um, did some work during the day, did a lot of the work in the, the second shift in order to not disrupt the learning going on. Um, so we have three heat pumps that have been placed in there for air conditioning and for heat. Three supplemental for the heat and for the air conditioning in the, uh, you know, in the warmer months. Um, I didn't, I didn't do that, but that just occurred. Um, I mean, the library just uh, right now at Northwest, we have about, we have 32 classrooms within our building, homeroom classrooms. Um, occupancy wise, we are not like, we are very well underneath our occupancy, depending on the amount of students we have in our building, just because we have pretty big square footage, but with our specialized programs and some of the things going on within our building, things are getting tighter. We, um, I would have told you at the beginning of January, we squeezed every little inch out of our building. Um, we did um, have to move another group into the library when we outgrew a room they were using. Um, it wasn't, once again, like occupancy within the building, but it was in that room, the program that was in there grew and grew. That teacher came and spoke to us. And um, luckily we were able to have the fire marshal come around, show us what was viable and able to um, do some quick movement to find a space that was more appropriate for that learning environment. So right now, um, you know, in Northwest, we were open to being far partners about how we can maximize our space to meet the needs of our children. Um, we have been saying before, we, you know, um, we uh, are very happy and um, welcoming to all the students that come into our building. And, um, and well, we'll go ahead. Sorry, I don't even cut you off. I saw the library and the new spaces and they're adding the walls and, and such. And I know a lot of those spaces actually are blocking some of those heat vents. <clears throat> Has there been any kind of talk or communication on taking that kindergarten out of your school and maybe spreading them out and opening up those classrooms for the, some of these special ed classrooms and such. Yeah, I think that would be like a discussion. I'm, that's not discussions that I've had very much with the district. I think that'd be district conversations, school committee conversations. Um, for myself, what I've been trying to do this year is problem solve that when immediate thing comes up, how can we meet the best needs of those students? So how would, can we identify? Would that be something you'd be in support of if that would be beneficial for that? I think that's something that um, to be considered. Yeah. Yeah. So we, we, Dan and I have been talking about this. Um, Dan has been a huge supporter that his students need to be in his neighborhood school. Mm -hmm. And so as students keep moving in this year, he, he wants to to maximize space. So we've been walking the building and looking at alternatives. So that discussion is starting. Okay. How many how many kids, how many kindergarten children are we talking? about? How many kindergarten students are in our building? Yeah. 46. Right? Well, it goes, you know, it. it one beggars the other one to piggyback on his question statement. 46, is it 46? 46, so 46. Two sections. Okay, it's only 46. two sections, two classrooms. But, and there's a group okay. of North All right, okay, students okay. that I, but, go to well, Free Street still well, for don't, kindergarten. Go ahead, go ahead, Nancy. No, what's okay. your question? I, I like it when I hear all this rattling around, but my question is as follows. One, how many kids? Yep. Two, what's the uh, limit for the kids? Mm -hmm. and three, to piggyback on his, if you're going to move the kids, where would they move to? So and all of that is terms all, yeah. So that's all preliminary. Those are just things we're considering at this point. So those are all the pieces that we would have to work through. So right now, it was nice to have the fire inspector come in. He walked the building last week, looking at every nook and cranny. So we're going to see how creative we can get before we make any decision. And so then we'll bring the details back to this committee. 
the last thing we want is to leave the meeting tonight with somebody mis misunderstand yeah. what was well, said because and, and some parent gets upset. You know what I mean? So well, it, it, it just beggars the question. Unfortunately, I'm the one that has to ask, mm -hmm. how much money are we talking about? Just nothing right now. Nothing it's counts. just yeah. right now, I'll, it's they're just considering. But you can't talk one without the other. They're yeah. considering all options. And when they have that down and they narrow the options, they'll be back and they'll report back to the school committee. Yeah. But right now, it's just. We still have time right now. Yeah. Right. Right now, it's it's because it goes examining back, all the It goes options. back to the thing that we talked about. Oh. I know, but right there. my hands. <laughs> it goes back to what we talked about weeks ago. I wanted to ask Harry on hmm. about the waiting list. And again, I'm asking that question. Is there a waiting list for this, for the kindergarten? One, there? No, not to my understanding. I believe that we still have some capacity within our kindergarten right now if we're at 46. Because what I wanted to ask, and I never got a chance to ask because all of a sudden I got bamboozled. Have we done it? Have they done it? Is there, has there, will be, has there ever been done study about the effect of being on a waiting list? And what's the end stage for waiting lists? How long do you have to be on a waiting list? You told that you have to. A waiting or, list to get into kindergarten? Uh, I mean, we have to take you. There is no waiting list. There is no waiting list. So you have to. Right. Well, it's just a question of where you might go. Right. Where was the. Somebody told me. Somebody said. It would must, create a choice. Like create a choice. Yeah. Which is but it different. To kindergarten. No. 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 It's that's, just. Daycare. That's like before, before and after. Before and after right. school programming. That's but not it kind cool. of it leads to that, doesn't it? No. no because no. your son or daughter is going to have a. um. A, a spot in class, a regular it's class. Crazy. It's the before and after school program. You pay for creative choice. Right. Right. It's just like paying for private daycare right. or a babysitter. Sorry, I keep. That's it. Press so at this, so at this point, let's have Dan just finish yeah, this. Go ahead. Yeah. So the answer okay. to that, Ron, is so I figured I'd just jump into it mm -hmm. and just search it out. So we don't leave missing with anybody <laughs> misunderstanding. If somebody might went to the kitchen to the living room, we'd come back and then so mm -hmm. just so everybody's on the same page, there are a number of areas being considered. There are no decisions made. Every child who comes into the system will have a place and creative choices. They're still working on trying to find Staff. additional employees to work the program so they can expand it. And that's go ahead. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's a nice great summary. And I think that, you know, as this conversation, if it does go to that route, we want to make sure that, you know, our staff and our and you know, communities would know, and our families know, you know, what I'm going to make sure your phone's not ringing tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Hit it. Now it is. There we go. Oh, Look at you that. showing us. <laughs> New boilers. So I know this was shown before from um, Butch, but I wanted to show it again. Um, this is uh, the new boiler that was installed in our Northwest in, um, in October. Um, it was. Um, very much needed, and it was a really impressive, another impressive job of this um, company coming out here, the school department supporting it, and um, getting this energy efficient um, boiler installed into our into Northwest. They're going to do um, install a few more pieces, I believe, in the summertime. I believe this was the the part to make sure it was up and functioning, but they would have a few more things to do in the summer. And um, we are just grateful for the district and for the company that did it. Um, was it with Boston Mechanical that did it? It was, it, it, it was yeah. Boston Mechanical, and they coordinated a bunch of other. Yeah. And it was, you know, around the clock type of. Good. Th this one was around the clock. The other one was working second shift. They were working a lot around the clock. And it, when in the beginning, at the end, you're like, wow. Yeah. Yeah. So they, it was impressive. They did a great job. And we were very fortunate and haven't had, you know, Don't even issues. say it. It's <laughs> gone well. Yep. And, I, and our custodian's been really. Uh, Doing a nice job that if there's anything's going on in classrooms, getting down, checking on those spots, making sure if things are too hot, too cold, making sure that you know everything's up, up to snuff there. So uh, we we're fortunate for that. That was an improvement that was put into us for the district. It was not um, um, inexpensive, but it was a terrific job and very much needed. This was a proposal that was brought to the school committee in the summertime, and it was brought to the school committee about having a conversation. And we were very fortunate at Northwest that. Um, that the school department supported it and the school committee supported it and put it to a vote that that night which really got the ball rolling 
Um, there, you know, the uh, quote has been received by the Olin brothers, um, O'Briens, O'Briens, Brian. sorry, O'Briens, and the plan is to hit, uh, break ground in April vacation. They they said about a four week process is what I'm, I'm they they mentioned to me. They need to put in ex excavation there for drainage. Um, there's a lot of drainage issues there on the playground, and um, after they finish this, they're going to section off part of the playground, so the playground's going to be open for the kids by like our blacktop where our basketball hoops are, and then they'll section off that area, open this up, and they're going to move our basketball hoops over because you know, some of the issues the kids have with the balls go over the fence, over to that little road that goes around the school. So that's going to be the, the second phase of it. Huge and we're really, you know, PTL, we've been talking about it, but we can't really get any concrete dates yet. We want to do like a big celebration on a weekend or something like or an event for, for families just to kind of like our, you know, grand opening for it. And it's hard to kind of hammer that down because we don't know exactly when it's going to be open. But once it's open, we, you know, we will send out the invites to all of you and, you know, the whole community and do a nice celebration for it because we're going to be excited for that and want to, you know, celebrate with our families. I'll grill. <laughs> to push me on the swing, so there we go. That'd be a photo op. Yeah, yeah. Not too hot. I don't want to do it. <clears throat> so a few uh, security uh, measures uh, re-implemented and put back in place. Now that we have visitors back in our building, um, sign-in protocols and visitor badges for visitors that are in the building. Um, we are requ um, um, requiring staff to start wearing their badges again, um, just because you know um, we have. Um, you know, as I said, 32 classrooms, so there can be a lot of um, people hired and additional staff in our buildings and some people that are between buildings. So for staff, for someone that's, you know, upstairs teaching in the fourth grade, they might not see all those, this new face and not know who's walking around the building. So we want to make sure that everyone knows whoever's in our building is supposed to be in our building. So um, we have implemented that as, while also asking our staff to wear their badges so people know if they don't know who you are. We also have a staff member that's made a nice little who's who's tree in our front lobby. So as new staff come along, put the faces up there so we can get another connection point together as staff, as we're also myself and the assistant principal are trying to do some of those things during our professional development and learning time of our staff. Um, we've added a few exterior cameras and we're gonna add a few more. Um, and we also have um, tinting that's gonna be going in for some of our first grade classrooms, um, particularly our classrooms as you pull in, because we have classrooms right when you pull into the parking lot, you can see right in. And then there are classrooms on the back side that when you know parents are waiting on the drop-off line, they can look right into those classrooms as well. Our goal is to you know eventually get get all of them with that tint, but right now we're we're you know focusing on what it seems to be the, the highest uh, priority areas. We already have tinting in our front area as you come into the building, and some of our exterior doors for our gym as well. So um, we're just looking to cameras motion based. Um, no, they're they're on all the time. I mean, you know, if, if somebody moving around and it follows them at all? No, they, they don't. Our, our cameras don't follow. They just are um, in one position. Um, and if you start zooming in, they get pixelated out. It's um, it's other conversations we have had as well that eventually we might want to look at um, upgrading them. Because if you, even if you have a car that's driving by, you can't really zoom in on the license plate unless it's in the right exact spot. Um, but um, they are, uh, and where they are, they're stationary. They don't. You can zoom in afterwards, but you can't zoom in with the moment. So when you're saying zoom in, like if somebody want, if for example, you if you want to know who was in the who was in, yeah, we don't want to talk too much about our security. Okay. We don't want the world to know what our security kind of plan is. Well, I mean, we want it to be top secret. You know what top secret goes sometimes, you know? Right. So it ends up places where you don't want it. Well, no, but we don't no, want it. Just one, one we don't want to movie. advertise in case All right. malicious people hear yeah. about them, they would know how to search. But have a it. conversation with the superintendent or Butch or, or Dan. Or Dan directly. And they can yep. go into the specifics. Yep, and that. I can, if you want to, I, can, I don't mind speaking to you about the capabilities of the cameras that we have currently. I was just wondering, because you, you know, you're saying you got the big windows, mm -hmm. and I just wondered what's the distance for the cameras. The one thing about cameras, Ron, it's it's kind of like your phone or your your uh, your, your de desktop or your you know tablet. The technology changes, and with that comes I know technology right changes. comes an update. You know, I mean, so the original cameras we had, they were good at the time, and it, it's kind of like you got to replace them every so often. The whole mm -hmm. system, part of them, and that's under evaluation all the time. Is it time to replace something? Is there pieces of it? You know, they're, they're, it's amazing what there is out there. But so, yeah, maybe an offline conversation about some of the other details. 
Go ahead, Dan. Dan. Sorry. No, that's okay. So this is our MCAS data from um, 2021, 2022. Um, blue meets or exceeds um, the um, the goal, the, the proficiency, and gray is partially or not meeting. So, um, you know, uh, we aren't, you know, we're not where we were in 2019, but we're making some growth, particularly in our math areas. And when you're looking at our, you know, our subgroups for math as well, is reflective of that, seeing our growth. Um, we're also looking at other data points this school year currently, looking at we have our, our map assessment testing that happens three times a year. We just had um, recent winter map data release. So when we had our uh, teacher um, professional learning day, that was a piece of what we looked at with our teachers um, while they were um, also um, doing some data analysis of some tools that we provided for them to look at for some action planning for students. Um, we also have our Dibbles data that is, you know, going over our, our students, um, you know, um, fluency with reading, phonemic awareness. So um, we provide that three times a year as well. So that's another data point. And we're also um, in the midst of doing um, student work analysis with our teachers, um, which is finding like a common common problem or our assignment you'll provide, providing it to your students, and then coming back and, and reviewing it as professionals and looking at what the trends are, and you know where where students are scoring well, and what areas you know and maybe in one area it's some teachers scoring better than another. How how what practices can we share? What are the trends that we can see that we are seeing some weaknesses so we can try to support our students um, to make better achievement growth. So, um, and we are working to, you know, support our teachers to build that capacity to support all the learners with the diverse population that we have in the Northwest of learners with our um, large um, students with disabilities and English language learners and other struggling learners and trying to make, and also pushing all of our learners. And, you know, if we have a student coming in who's forming, you know, above grade level, we make sure that we're pushing them to, to, to reach their full potential. So um, this is a data point um, for last year that's very important. And we're also um, analyzing the other data points that the district um, provides us with for the assessments that are provided, and also trying to do some common assessments for ourselves as well within our school building. Um, so, goals, um, some goals that we released this you know past year, and I don't know if I'm jumping ahead or not to our staff. We we're hope um, one of our goals that myself and the assistant principal, one of our first. Uh, professional learning times of our staff was around 70% um, of students meeting their map brick goal, meaning that the map will set um, the student scored this in the fall, they should score this in the winter, and ho hope this in the spring, this will be adequate progress. So our goal is that 70% of our students are going to meet their their goals there. And our goal for our, you know, our chronic absenteeism, which we'll get to that in a moment, is around um, reducing that number to 15%. Um, we are not on that number now. We're, we're higher than that number. Last year, you know, we were at 30 percent. We're currently at 25 percent. We've reduced it by 5 percent. Our goal is to continue to um, and on a few slides. I'll have some information what we're trying to do about that, but our goal is not to sit there and say 5 percent. We want to get to that, you know, that 15 percent, and that's what we're, we're striving for for this year. I mean, my hope is to to beat that, um, but I know that's, you know, to say as we're in February and we're at that 25, but we're still going to be doing our due diligence to uh, to try to get that and try to beat that goal. You're moving so. in the right direction, so that's what matters. Well, yep, that's our plan, and we're, you know, I think it's all of us pulling together. Um, our teachers really make some nice um, communities for our students to um, that they want to be there every day. So for us, it's to try to take down those barriers that are preventing it, and trying to support families. And you know, it was it was a tough fall with mask off coming back in the schools of RSV and the flu and the stomach bug, um, and so we recognize that. So some of these absences are very legitimate, and we want to make sure that we're supporting families that. Are running the barriers to get their, the students in, but also recognizing that there were some illnesses that went around that um, were contagious. And yes, if your student has a stomach bug, they should stay home. Um, but it, a big piece of it, you know, that you know, they're not in the building, they can't learn. So that's a big piece as well. So we're trying to communicate that with our families. We've also have an understanding that you know, if there there are outliers, so we got to understand that students that need to see the doctor for medical reasons and things like that as well. So we want to. Yeah, if you can't. If you can't, uh, if you're not in school, you can't catch up. No. Nope. And if you can't catch up, you can't go forward. And that's the problem is not these these students, they're, they're playing like catch up mm -hmm. and trying to right, get to where they're supposed to be. So, I mean, you can't do that if you, unless you're in the classroom. So No, you're absolutely right. Oh, I 
Oh, this is, um, so we're not at chronic absenteeism yet. I will speak about that in a moment. This is um, some information on our, our English language learner students um, within our school. So our community has changed dramatically within the last decade. Um, this was brought up at our last um, whole, whole district PD. The presenter was talking about, you know, within a decade, demographic change. Um, so actually um, made a change to some of our PD in the afternoon and looked up some of the demographic change in Northwest, presented that to staff. And our, you know, our ELL population grew from around seven to eight percent a decade ago to over 25 percent now, um, which um, isn't a negative or a positive. It's just it just is what it is. Um, I, we see this, you know, as a strength for our community. We view our English language learners population as emerging bilinguals. That you know is going to be a big strength for them as the, as they're growing full, um, grow for, further in the education and the adulthood, and it creates this environment of learning within our buildings. Um, where students are learning from each other, which is really special to see. Um, and for our ELL population last year, 48% of them progressed to meet their target towards English language proficiency. Um, we've received some nice support from the district around staffing around that. Our numbers have grown, but while our numbers have grown, our staffing has grown to meet the needs of those students. So now it's about looking at, you know, the services we're providing and how, how we can best provide those services, which is something that we have to do with all of our, our, our staffing in our schools. Um, but we do feel well supported in that that realm, and um, we see this as you know a strength of our community as well, and one that we we want to grow with them. So I spoke a little bit about the chronic absenteeism, and I'm going to speak a little further. These are some of our areas of focus this past school year. I know I talked about those goals that were set. Um, chronic absenteeism. Some of the steps we have taken um, this year, um, having ongoing communication with home. Um, we're having bi-weekly wellness meetings, and that's where for our um, counselors, school psychologists, our nurse when she can when she can attend and get coverage, um, myself, the assistant principal, and at those meetings, um, we'll discuss. We'll, we will, and beginning there was very much so about the attendance. That will be a piece that we will bring up at those meetings. We'll also talk about the social emotional needs, academic needs of the students within the school. This is a time that if there's something emergent, we'll talk about it to try to make sure we're getting supports for students. At these times, we'll also, you know, assign outreach for families if there's a student that is having, you know, uh, difficulty of school attendance, uh, schedule home visits, and we are relaunching a rapid check-in program that we used last year. So we did relaunch that at our last PD. That's a time for um, there's, you know, research around um, connections to adults in schools and improving, you know, school outcomes. And I know at our, our stage, it's a little different than the high school, that, you know, there are other things that could lead to absence, but we're just trying to make sure that every kid has a, has at least one positive connection within the building and um, trying to focus on the students that are referred to that, that are outside of their classroom teacher. So who's that other person that maybe for five minutes can check in um, with that student just and just to say, happy to see you here today. And that's great, you know, and, you know, how are things going? All right, have a, keep keep it up want to want to check in with you tomorrow um that's something that as we relaunch it as we get names on the list we reach out to families get consents for that and then do some training with the people that are doing that that knowing that this is really about making connections but if things start going down the realm that you need you, you know it feels more serious then we got to connect with a counselor connect with admin this is not a counseling session or anything like that this is about making connections with kids and not blurring those lines so it's you know um, we did have that launched that last year, so we have some of those protocols as we're going to relaunch that this year. Um, attendance letters and target letters, we're sending those out um, periodically. We just sent out another round of those. We do see tardiness improving. We do get outreach from families that there are legitimate reasons why some of those absences occur. So once again, we, we understand that. We're not sending out those letters to uh, wag our fingers at anybody. That's not the purpose. We're just sending out those letters um, to what the mayor was saying, that if you're not in the, not in the school, you're not in the seat, you can't learn. And they know if they've been absent, and some of these are legitimate, but we're still trying to get that message out. That, you know, we got 180 days, we need them here for as many days as they can be here for. Um, and also our assessment team. Our assessment team, a lot of this fall, has been focusing on um, looking at different data that's been released by the district, but also looking at attendance data. And they have worked on some parent communication flyers, that we um, actually they had, had translated and we're sharing that out. That's going to break it down in different graphics to send it a different way, just so you know we can communicate it in a different manner. It's just not just the letters, not just the calls, not the home visits. Like here's another piece of information that shows what happens when you miss 
you know, one day, one day a month, you miss 10 days, you miss two days a month, you miss 20 days and just shows the accumulating. You, you come in an hour late, how many hours is that going to be for the, for the school year? And, and that adds up over time and just trying to provide the information to, to families understand they have a lot to balance, but we're just trying to share what we have to try to, you know, improve those outcomes in that area. Our culture of achievement is, is a bit of an initiative that the district has been doing. Um, the principals have been receiving training on that for the Lynch Leadership Academy. That's something that we're um, doing ongoing for our staff. Um, we're doing ongoing PD. We're implementing procedures and protocols for data analysis and, and analyzing student work. Spoke about that briefly earlier. We're focusing on ELA shifts in the science of reading. And um, we're, we're focused on trying to strengthen our whole group and small group instruction. Um, our teachers, um, they work extremely hard to meet the needs of our students. Um, our teachers are, you know, they're engaging in this in this this PD to grow as professionals. Um, while they, you know, they've always ha already had a really strong toolkit, but you know, as as you know, the needs change. You got to keep on responding. So, um, but you know, I do. You know, our teachers are the backbone of our school, and. Um, you know, our, you know, our teachers are terrific. I, I, and I also believe our students and our families are terrific. So I think that, you know, we're just trying to row in the same direction to, to move in the same direction. Notice I'm saying a lot about the PDs, but that's not to be a negative about, you know, the capacity or other work that's going on in our classrooms. If you walk around the classrooms, you see learning happening in the classrooms. And it's our job as the, you know, the district and the administrators to make sure that, you know, we're, we're capitalizing on all, all those minutes and all that time to push kids towards grade level curriculum, push kids towards the standards to, to close to close those gaps. Um, because I, if you walk through the buildings, you're not going to see, you know, kids running or mucking or anything like that. You're going to see kids engaged. And it's us to try to, you know, work with our teachers to make sure that, you know, we keep on improving that achievement within our building. So um, I did have a conversation that I had on Friday with a supervising um, practitioner uh, from Fishburg State University this past semester. We've added um, two student teachers within our building and maybe four or five um, pre prac students who come in who get hours to come observe observation hours. So she wanted to share a reflection that one of her student teachers had within her classroom. And she, um, the student teacher, shared that um, within, you know, coming to our school, observing one of our teachers, um, she shared in her reflection all the differentiation, the building schema and the scaffolds evident within one class period of that teacher's classroom who she'd been in for one day. And she said that that student teacher um, throughout a whole semester within a different school, within a different district with similar population within our school had not witnessed um, any of those instructional moves for the needs of the diverse learners within the other school. And she witnessed that in one, one class period within our teacher and the professor wanted to come highlight that to like share like your, your teachers are are working hard and my student teachers are noticing from when they've come to other schools and coming here um and you know when i'm speaking about diverse learners speaking about the students of ieps the ell merging bilinguals the you know and other struggling learners and i just want to highlight that i don't believe that's an outlier i mean that's more the norman northwest that our teachers are working extremely diligent to meet the needs of these students and we you know we and when I say we, myself, Ab Abby Lane, the assistant principal, our job is to support, to help them keep moving that achievement. Because I, I do, it's definitely not a um, case of lack of effort or lack of trying to provide the supports. So that's you know our job, and we know that. So we take that seriously, and we're trying to work with the district to to make that come to fruition. Um, so now, now that I've shared that, we we'll get to some of the the lighter, funner things as well going on in Northwest. This is um, this isn't a complete synopsis. Even when I was coming over, I'm like, this is going to get too big because I can keep on adding things on here. Um, but some of the things we have done already this school year, ice cream socials, bulldog bingo, our book fair, our pasta supper, jingle bell fair, winter concert. We're going to have an upcoming spring concert. Um, we were fortunate last year to have a winter concert before the school year or spring concert before the school year released. Therapy dog visits. Um, field trips for all grades have been scheduled. Um, spring events um, that we're working on with the PTO, um, fun run, food drive, um, get decorating cookies and cupcakes. Read Across America is another event that we're going to be launching with our, with our school community. Literacy night, ELL celebration, among others. Um, 
So I do have some slides of some of these events that have occurred this year. So as we see right here, Bulldog Bingo, which I can say that I was the bingo polar announcer and um, I really, really enjoyed that more than I more than I expected. I was like, we can do another Bulldog Bingo next week. This was awesome. <laughs> so and I was getting heckled by some of the students. You, that's the you're supposed to call a four. Sorry, it wasn't a four. It wasn't on there. Um, and we also had Mount Wachusett Community College come in for Tall Tales and Heroes performance, which was nice for our students, to, our first grade students to take part in that um, pres um, that play during the school day earlier this year, October, maybe October, November-ish when that occurred. This is some pictures of our terrific pasta supper, um, a great event that we relaunched since the, you know, the pandemic. Um, several people um, within this room were there and it was a really terrific event and um, very fortunate for all the volunteers and um, parents and um, teachers that really pulled together to make that event terrific. Um, and some great cooking going on and great service happening. And we had the Boy Scouts that were volunteering their time for seating and um, teachers that were being waiters and waitresses. So it was a really nice event to connect with families. Um, and speaking about events, um, I mentioned this before, but we've had great attendance this year at our, our open house. Um, we've had great attendance at mostly all of our events that we've had this year. And we are very fortunate to have a very engaged PTO who plans terrific events for families. And like I mentioned before, our, our community does want to connect in person. So we're striving to try to, to offer these events for families so we can connect in person. Um, I think it's really, you know, the important healing part after this time when we were isolated from each other. So we're trying to do our due diligence to um, hear what families want, want to see and try to make those events um, happen within our building. And we're anticipating great attendance on these events that we will be offering in the spring. So uh, this right here is our therapy dog visits. Uh, this is new to Northwest. I think the school committee and the school to, um, for approving the therapy dogs and the school department for pursuing therapy dogs. Our community is very excited and uh, benefits greatly from the service. Um, the kids, the kids love it. They ask when the dogs are coming back. And, um, you know, as you can see on some of those pictures, it's evident that um, our children love it. So um, that's been a really nice piece, something that um, I was envious of in a previous district when I heard some of my former colleagues that they had a therapy dog. And now at least we, you know, might not be there all day, but at least every other week we have, we have a therapy dog there. Our school psychologist coordinates with, the, um, with um, Angela Thomas around which classrooms and who, which students to see. So um, it's kind of, it's been seamless, but it's been really nice addition to our school community this year. Um, school pride days. So um, we're having several school pride days this year. This is an example of fancy day. Um, this, um, as you can see, the young ladies, they're very fancy. And the student on the right, he told me that he dressed as me for fancy day. So, <laughs> so um, I actually saw him today and he's like, yeah, that was me. I was dressing as you. So um, that was a really nice, um, um, it was really fun. I know our teachers really enjoyed it. The kids really enjoyed it. So um, we're trying to build out other, other uh, spirit days. We have a kindness day coming up. We're gonna do, a, uh, we had a sports apparel day where you let students know that no equipment or helmets, but sports apparel come in. We just don't, you know, not gonna be doing football practice in the hallways. Um, and we have um, superhero day coming up as well. So, um, and if you wanna participate, let me know. I'll let you know when they are. You can come on by if you're cape on if you want. So, but we're trying to build out these other um, throughout the school year. Um, it was really nice when we did our fancy day and the kids were really excited for it. So we're trying to build some more of these just to, you know, make it fun. And get um and get the kids excited. Um, this is um something that our PBIS team has taken on. We have a PBIS team up in our building. We launched it last year, um, and it's voluntary. They meet after school a couple of times a month. They discuss um, <coughs> incentives for students. They discuss initiatives within the school, ways that we can, you know, uh, build um, social emotional growth within our students, and also ways that we can spread share this like this. So we are very fortunate that we have a dedicated teachers. It's open to everybody um, that can come to it. And we're fortunate that like a core group continues to come to try to plan that for, for our school community. And they do it, you know, um, because they think it's necessary. It's not any type of additional um, stipend or anything that they receive. Um, and we appreciate that they do that for us, for our students and for our school community. This is our winter concert this past year. Um, it was, as you can see, very well attended. It, um, it was terrific. And we're excited for oh. our... Um, for our spring concert, students um, within our building are very excited about band and chorus. It was very small last year when we launched it, 
And this year, you know, we, we were getting close to capacity for our, our band and chorus. And we are very fortunate that we have a terrific music teacher who's really grown that program. And, you know, it, it's, it's a good problem. And if we get to the point where we have a capacity issue, then it's a brainstorming issue. Um, but it's not, you know, it's a, it's a positive that students, um, students are come before school to practice their instruments. They stay after school to do course or some of the other pieces. So these students are dedicating time outside of the school to um, be a part of this. And it's, uh, I saw another additional piece, I believe it's our band and I think our course as well, that they're gonna be doing some, um, some performances at the high school, which is gonna be really exciting. Um, I saw that released, I, I hope I didn't say, it. <laughs> I hope I didn't, I thought it was public information, maybe it's not, um, but it was, um, I hope our students know, and if they don't know, then, then go to sleep because 6.45, I guess don't go to sleep. <laughs> But that's exciting, and, I, and I'm, I'm excited for that and for our, our, for our students. And um, I think that's only going to help grow the arts. For us, Lemon Stern, I think the arts are very important, and we are fortunate to have a, um, some terrific um, arts teachers within our building and a terrific music teacher who's really who's in her second year, but she's phenomenal and really is growing this program. Um, our reef contest, this is something that our staff did um, around um, the holiday time. Uh, staff participated in it. They, uh, myself and Superintendent Deacon, judged the reefs, um, and afterwards the reefs were donated to the Sunrise of Lemonster. Um, and um, that's kind of been an annual thing that one of our teachers has organized, and we're also going to be donating Valentines to the Sunrise of Lemonster as well. Um, those are going to be student-generated Valentines uh, for for teachers whose classes create those to try to bring some, you know, cheer and joy over there as well. Um, and as I mentioned before, you know, there was a uh, food drive earlier this year that one of our counselors organized that we were donated to uh, a couple of um, food shelters. So um, I think it's nice to try to, you know, we, we do have a population within our school, you know, that have some need, but it's also nice to, you know, show that we're going to give back to others as well. Discovery Kitchen, this is an initiative for Chartwells. It's food exp uh, exploration for our students. Chart they come in, they teach a lesson and then expose the students to different types of food. Um, and currently, you know, five of our first, five of our seven first grade classrooms have participated in the Discovery Kitchen. Um, had to reschedule one of the events, so they're gonna come back in February, I guess that's now, to do, um, uh, I think one more of our kindergartners classrooms and the other two first grade classrooms. And the plan is to hopefully hit each one of our grade levels. Um, as you see, it is in the CAF. Um, they went around to all the classrooms I don't know how many classrooms we had, but we were able to be flexible and oh, well, we can use the cafeteria and you can do two classrooms. So you're not, you know, coming for, you know, um, you know seven days straight or going to this classroom to that classroom. So we're trying to, you know, bring this experience to our students while also doing it in like a flexible, efficient way that's going to work um, for everybody. So they'll hopefully get the first grade done, roll out to the second grade, get up to the third, fourth and fifth. That's that's the hope and the goal for this year. Um, and um, I guess in closing, um, exciting things are, are happening at, at Northwest. Um, learning is occurring in classrooms. Um, we need to continue to refine our focus to ensure we're not only meeting the needs of our students, but we're pushing them to meet their academic potential. Um, our students are highly skilled. And myself and Abby Lane, the assistant principal and the district are working to support our teachers in meeting the needs of our diverse community. Um, at Northwest, we have great teachers, great students and terrific families. And as the slide says, um, Together we will succeed. So um, I appreciate your time. If you have any more questions, I'd be happy to do my best to try to answer them or jot down, jot them down if I don't have something immediately and get it to Superintendent Deacon too. Thank you, Josh. I think you pretty much covered it all. Ron, did you have something? I just had two questions. At the beginning, you know, when you were showing the uh, the, um, the uh, basketball court. Yep. Did they say what the expiration date is on? Uh, how long is it good for? And did they give you any uh, instruction how to keep it in good condition? You know, different because mm -hmm. it's new now, so you have to use some yes. different kind of cleaning agents on it. Correct? No. No. So I know they share that information with with Butch um, from facilities. I know they were very clear around not having food or drinks there. I know that um, we did purchase some rugs for the um, um, for the uh, Parks and Rec. So when they come in from the outside, that you know it's not going to bring the dirt onto the the floor right there. Um, and I know that um, 
know, our custodians are following whatever those procedures are that Butch, I don't know the ins and outs of it, but I know they did give direct <coughs> instructions about how to keep that up to the best um, looking for. I do not know what the expiration date is for it. And we're hoping that, you know, it's going to be there for a, a long time. Um, looks wonderful now and our custodians are doing a great job of maintaining it. And we have a, you know, a gym teacher uh, who does a really nice job as well of maintaining it and letting us know what he needs if he sees something that could damage it. The other thing you were saying about oh, special meetings, uh, the health meetings, I believe. The wellness, the, the wellness, wellness. Was, yes. <clears throat> how many students attend, how, how many times a week, or it said bi-weekly. Yes. But uh, is it held in the afternoon or during the day? How many students, how many teachers, is it? I guess basically from my, my little mind, it must be labor intensive. So for those meetings, what we're doing is we're, we're meeting with, um, and we meet with these staff throughout the week, but that's a time to dedicate to meet with, we have three um, counselors within our building. We have a school psychologist in our building and we I have a nurse. So they, um, we wanna give, um, we wanna reserve time as myself and the assistant principal to meet with them as a team to discuss, you know, initiatives within the building, school building, and also talk about if there's something burning they haven't been able to speak to us about or something we need to share. So there's a student in a certain grade level that we need to share across each other. So we try to have that dedicated time so we can talk about the chronic absenteeism, but also other social emotional needs within the building. However, I will say that, you know, we are in constant communication with those staff members. And we also think it's valuable that we set aside time to put some agenda items on there and meet as a group. So we're all on the same page and we can share information, try to have an agenda so we can go through it and um, discuss needs of students or needs of the school. But there aren't any students there. We will, we might discuss students, but there's not any students within that meeting. It's just the adults there. Just the adults. Yes. So I, I, I it just said bi-weekly, so it's every, means every, every two weeks. Yes. Now, Am I wrong? Am I wrong? Yep. Every, it's actually we met today, so it's every other Monday. Every other Monday, but it's it. The, the teachers meet up, but there's no meeting with the students. No, because they're discussing students. I I I, I get that. Mm -hmm. I understand that, but you know, I guess it's got to be me. It has to be me. I mean, to either. Josh's question, Josh's statement or Dean's statement. We're talking here as adults about the students. Do they know we're talking about them? Yeah, I know should. you are looking at me like I got three heads, mm -hmm. but seriously, if we're not supposed One's to talk, enough, well, you know, if you know, maybe it's me. Maybe I well, could ask the question in a different way. I think I know where you're going with it. Go ahead. If you think well, you know, you're, I, I mean, I think you better, if you I, think you can read I, my mind, it's well, illegal. And all the I mean, go ahead. It's it's really to talk about sort of the benefit of the resources, kind of what they're seeing out there. You know, what what are they experiencing out there, and what can the what what can the principal do to help them and the and the assistant principal? So, I mean, it's about what what it's about issues. So right, it's, it's not, but it, it's something that the benefit is the outcomes are really what's going to benefit the student, right? I, I get that, yeah. but you know, he said it. They meet up, right? And the adults are meeting up and they're talking about the kids. Well, but who's there? Who's there to talk for the kids? That's my question. Am I wrong to ask that well, question? I, maybe because they titled it wellness, you know, maybe that is something wrong. Maybe with my that's. Answer. Not the, or is this the better name for it. Come on, somebody Explain jump in. Stop what it. it is that you do. Yeah. But yeah, I was gonna say I think that what's gonna happen is in those discussions, they're thinking of resources and ways to right. help students with various issues or problems or challenges. So they're coming up with answers and then they can implement it or let the families know mm -hmm. that these resources are out there or hook them up or make referrals or make accommodations um, in the classroom to support the students. And so that's the purpose. I guess I'm. I must be very twisted. Because, but on the other hand, Ron, uh, approach it this way, right? Come, come at it the other way. The other thing <laughs> that that Dan talked about was that it's they, try, th they try to have blocks, say, of students, and somebody within the building 
that is engaging with them. That's kind of watching out, seeing what's going on. They've been out sick. Have they noticed things that aren't right? So in other words, it's a big building, but it's their way of individualizing and having somebody as that team person, that contact, kind of an extension of what we're talking about here. So it's really observatory, really, from the student standpoint and not, and that's the purpose of this. It doesn't mean they aren't doing other things that engage the students in the school, because they are. I think we just saw a million and one things. I, I get this that. is just a more observant, more an observation of what's going on in the schools and their students <laughs> and ways that they can help and make recommendations that will filter back through the school. So it's not meant to be, you know, the student council or any, which I'm sure they're doing all of those things. We just saw all of those things. All I asked was this. I heard you, and I tried to explain it to you. Is that a, a, a fair representation? Is, something, on, is this something yes. I'm, I'm not reading right? It's probably the the, the title of the, the group meetings, but they're really to... to there are con Whoa. Oh. Is, is there a concern that you have that kids are being spoken about or gossiped about? Like, do you feel like there's something? Hold on. He's the one that said it. I'm just... Reading what I read was up over there. Wellness meetings bi-weekly. He said it's a group of, group of teachers. They sit there and they talk about the kids. But do the kids know they're being talked about? Well, that's my question. Not so it's, students, but it's like, big, it's like we're, right. we're legislating Big Brother's watching. No, no, so no, I, I that's like so, more about the issues. So that's not how I perceived it. I perceived it as it's the staff checking in on how kids were doing right, in an informal kids, environment. Kids so the kid, that's my, that's my point. They're, they're not that's there to prosecute the kids. They're there nothing. to check in on how someone's doing. I didn't say nothing about prosecuting. I just said there's nobody there. To, and yes, the teachers are saying they observe this, they observe yeah. that. That's fine. But <laughs> the kid doesn't have any, the kid, boy or girl, doesn't have anybody speaking for them. That they're all there speaking anyway, for them. If, wrong, if there's an issue, if there's another issue that's that's individualized for a particular student, you just explain. They have a school psychologist. They, I mean, they have a team of people. That's an individual thing. These they're talking sort of broader things here, things that are overall to the school. So if they're a, then that parent, that student, gonna have plenty to say if 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 there's a particular issue. That's all. I was just. Yeah, it's not a not a bad question. Just okay. Thank you very much. I really okay. appreciate. It. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. I appreciate. Thanks, it. Thank Dan. you very much. We were talking about. I don't know if anybody's seen the the federal government is going to change the nutrition. You know the cat. You know what goes on in the cafeteria. And I said this when we first started to do this because they did. I think President Obama made a really avid attempt at changing what goes on, but. <laughs> It's not as easy as just a blanket. Hey, we're, you know, we're not going to allow sugar in the place because that's not going to solve it. It's providing all healthy alternatives, which I think Chatwell is well aware of. Because when I walk around and look in those barrels, you know, when they first started this thing, you know, it was apples, <laughs> all the things that are good for you. And it's it, it takes a it's a it's it's not just about a policy change. It's really about a, just a change of culture and what you eat, what instead of, you know, drinking whatever, you eat this. And, and and then, Ron, you want to talk about individual choice when they when they get rid of the Suzy Qs and then there's a student protest. <laughs> they, 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 but we'll listen to it. it. But we'll they, listen they, to it. Because <laughs> as you were saying about this food thing. Look it, we got mad here. Who did a better job at representing students? Everything. I know, but, you know. He covered it all tonight. Talking about the food change. Look what happened in Montana and Idaho. They raised the ruckus because the food that they were only supposed to have, it wasn't enough for the kids who worked on the farm right. and went to school in the, in the afternoon. Well, they own the farms. They should be eating real well. All right. So we're going to move now on to mid-year assessment. Hey, Costco. Imagine that. We're talking prom and mid-year assessment all in one night. Oh, boy. And graduation. <laughs> I'm gonna sooner than we Thanks. think. We're halfway, I'm right? Every Sunday message already because I'm getting the hundredth day is coming up too. Two Thursday, I think. Next Friday. Yeah. Oh, is it so next Friday? It's the hundredth day. Yep. Ooh. Yeah. Okay. So I'm here to um, give an update on our winter data. Mm -hmm. um, so that's our Dibbles, our map, and iReady, which is our middle school six through eight data. Oh, gosh, I have to click and move. Hold on. <laughs> this is going to be. Don't we usually have Kyle running? Yeah, I guess, but okay. Kyle's giving us this. 
now. And maybe he doesn't want to be our friend anymore and click, but <laughs> okay. So um, in Dibbles, which is our fluency and some comprehension piece, those are our five, our four elementary schools and pre-street data for that um, that we talk about. And just to remind you that this is just an assessment of our basic early literacy skills. It's a set of procedures that our teachers do with our students. Um, they design, it's a short one minute fluency measure. It can be used to detect risk and monitor the development of early literacy in reading skills. Um, each subtest has been thoroughly researched because we, we only do research based here with Ms. Pola, and demonstrated to be reliable and a valid indicator of early literacy development. Um, our results are used for um, to um, evaluate individual student development and also for our teachers to look at grade level feedback and to help with some of their instructional objectives when looking at fluency. So this year, our fall to winter, we talked about, um, I just shared and, and, and showed you that here's our beginning, which you saw in the beginning. You didn't see kindergarten in the beginning because we didn't have kindergarten done the last time we presented this. And then now in the winter benchmark. So students that move to the green and the blue is what you see and the students move to grade level core. So kindergarten, obviously with all that nice, um, um, presentation and what they do every day, there's a plus 26 growth, which is really what we expect in the kindergarten from the beginning to middle. Um, first grade, there was a 5%. Second grade, there was a 6%. So students went out of the red or the yellow and moved to the green or blue. In third grade, we had a slight decline. Um, but that's also, um, it's not, um, it's, it's a little typical in the winter because they're learning how to read from going from learning how to read to, I mean, reading to learn. So they slow down because um, they want to comprehend and they want to um, answer the questions correctly at the end. So they don't read as fast. Um, and then fourth and fifth, um, I don't, you guys have it in front of you. Um, we did a plus 4% in fourth grade. In fifth grade, um, the reading gets a little bit more um, slower um, because they are thinking about the comprehension and it, the, the um, reading selections are a little bit difficult. So we are still overall moving in the right direction as an all. We were up moving about five to 10% of our kids up to the core and the core support. And as you can see, our red got smaller and so did our yellow. So in a lot of areas. So we're hoping that we continue this process. And I'll, of course, again, I'll repeat, um, I will report out in May or June, depending on when we do this, around the end results. Mm -hmm. But we're moving in the right direction. And um, I think that um, you know students are um, getting the foundational skills they need as we keep moving. Yes, Ronnie. You know, these changes you were showing from the, uh, at the, thir at the uh, third grade and then the fifth grade, is yeah. that consistent with the developing of their, uh, of their- uh, Right, so in third grade, they're learning how to read, right? And they're still doing that in the beginning months of third grade. Um, and then they're also learning reading to learn. So they have to move their, so now they're concentrating on reading and trying to remember, make sure they know it. So it does slow the process down. So where fluency is fast and, you know, how fast and how um, well you can read, they start slowing down a little bit in third grade because they're starting to read to learn. So they wanna make sure they're understanding what they're reading. The beginning, they're reading words. They're not right. really conscious. They're not really taking it all in. in but the yes. school bus development right? of critical skills. So right? yes, right. This is all time. So this is all time. So they slow it down because they really want to um, do that piece. And this is, like I said, one piece of our data that we use. We go back to map the measurement of academic progress. Once again, that is our K through five. Just to give you a quick update of that, that's also given three times a year. The assessment is adaptive. So as students answer correct, correctly, the questions get more difficult. As the students answer incorrectly, the questions get a little bit easier or go back down to their level. So adaptability allows for strengths and opportunities for growth to be identified for each student to determine how to best support their learning and their individualized instruction. So that's what we use this for. Can, can um, I guess you if you if you get stuck on something, if the student gets stuck on something, yeah, and you say they kind of back up, 
they, they can move forward again if they get them right. right. They, they kind of approach it a little bit differently because sometimes it's about how you ask the question. Yeah. They want to make sure they get it before they move on. Right. So does that software so if able they to move, diagnose it and say, you know what, this student's stuck on this. Let's try to explain it to them a different way. I, I honestly can't say okay. that that happens because we don't get to see the um, actual questions. But if you go back and you answer, they'll give you to the next level and they'll give you. To, so, yes, it kind of is a back way. It might necessarily be, like you said, in a different way, or it might give them a couple easy ones to then go back to the next question that's similar. Like I got to think that that's the wave of the. I mean, the, the, yeah, the we should be looking at all that. Software. We have a hard time explaining, trying to figure out what, how it's being explained to us. Well, sometimes it's a cultural thing. Sometimes it could be a, a so you want to come back, take another. You know, let me explain it a little bit differently, right? And then right. sometimes, yeah, I get it. And then you move on. It's, right? it's, Math is a lot like it's that. been a while since I've seen the questions. But from what I remember, they give you questions on like it seemed like they were giving me this questions on the same topic. And then once like. Once I became more confident in that, it almost seemed like that was what I thought was like. I just remember at the time I was like, oh, this is super cool. Like I, I, I almost wished other forms of testing were similar to it because right. it felt like it was listening to me. Right. And I would like assume understood. as so it's cool as they develop this, it'll be like texting on your phone. It'll fill in half of what you're they know what the next <laughs> they know what the next word's going to be. Right. So good. Uh, That's good. Yeah. So math um, math achievement um, is we compared the scores from fall to winter by looking at percentile ranking. So for an example, the percentile shows how well the student performed on the test compared to students with a similar ability. Okay, so there's an example there. If a student with a 77 percentile ranking means that that student performed better than 77 percent of the student peers that he who took the test at the same time. Does everyone understand that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I, my, my, my dirty question is, as you gave that example, this, this, it scored better than seventy percent of his peers. Now, that's from fall to winter, correct? Yes. What happened? What happens? How do you? Can you? Does prevent from dropping back? Is there a leveling off? Is there sometimes where that that kid who scored seventy seven? How do you, how do you prevent it from falling back? Does they fall well, back? Hopefully, yes. Well, sometimes they do. Ron, depending on how well they test in the in the spring, sometimes they go even further ahead. So let's look at the data, so then you can see a little bit where we did have some positive and we did have um, uh, you know a couple of fallbacks. Okay, so the next one is our K through two. So if you look at math and you look at reading, um, students that were in the 61 to 99th percentile, so they scored that during at the same student ability that well, in math, they were 38% um, and in reading, they were 38%. So 30% of our students in K through two placed in the 61 percentile of or above in reading and math. Okay, and then we had 20% of students who do, who fell in the 41 to 60, and we still have 42% of our students who fell in the first to 40. Okay. In third grade to fifth grade, our achievement, 46% of our students in grades three through five place in the 61 percentile or above in reading. So if you can see there, we still have our um, students who are still making some growth, staying the same and moving along with the line. And there's a few setbacks, but mostly in the positives moving forward. OK. And this is also if we look at our math growth, we talk about math growth. We will compare growth from fall to winter by looking at the change in our students RIT score. Everyone remembers what the RIT score is. We have our RASH unit, a measurement scaled, developed to um, simplify the imperturbation of a test score. It's the score represents a student's achievement level. The RIT growth is a difference in the RIT score from fall to spring. So each student in the fall gets a RIT um, score, and then they get a how far is that student going to go in the spring? So it could be eight points. It could be nine point growth. It could be 12, 12 point growth. If we move on to here, 
percentage of students who met their growth projection. This is great. So in math, we had 50% of our students meet their growth projection just for the winter. And we had 57% of our kids hit the growth projection. So like I said, they get uh, a score in the fall and then they get what they're looking for in the um, spring and some of our kids are already there and they're making their growth. Any questions on this slide or? No. Oh. Oh, that's a good question. Um, I think that um, in fifth grade math, they are um, still like when they look at some of the standards that are being tested then, they haven't quite got to yet because we don't forget we have a, a kind of a curriculum um, scale and our, our they don't take MCAS and math until April and May. So our teachers really are diligent about the first three units around the number of sense and the algebraic thinking and that piece. So I think some of our kids might not do as well as they move up for, further. But I think that when you see the scores in the spring, they kind of jump right back up again because they've gotten the curriculum pieces. It's really, you know, we're only three and a half months into our curriculum before we read, we do them again. And then they have from there until June. So they have six months um, in the spring. So I think that as we keep moving forward um, and, you know, we're just hoping that um, we're still bouncing back and we just want to make sure that we're moving forward and we are moving forward. We know the students are getting what they need and um, are moving forward. So, don't on point, yeah. Don't yeah. you remember back in the fifth grade, things start to get serious. <laughs> no, really, they do all of a sudden. It's like less it's, fun. Yeah. Things start to get serious, right? I mean, that's and it shows it right there, yeah. right? No, it's, this is for so, real. So, um, in the middle school level, we use iReady. So, iReady is similar to math. It's a given three times a year. It's another adaptive assessment. Um, students, and we already went through what that means to you guys, so you guys know that piece. It allows students to work at their level as they move forward. So we'll compare scores from fall to winter by looking at students' performance on the diagnostic in relation to their grade level. So this is a little bit different. So they're determined by the student's scale scores upon completion of the diagnostic and, cre and correlated to their grade level performance. Is can the student jig the student jig the test? No. No. See how it's at the, as a student answers correctly. Can a student sit there and just push buttons? No, no, no. Yeah. It says here, as a student and, but, answers correctly, the mm -hmm. question gets more difficult. As a student answer incorrectly, the question gets easier. Mm -hmm. So can the kid jig the test so that way they just go, keep on answering? To go easier? Yeah. So would the teachers monitor this? Male test? or female? Um, does well, that happen? Yeah, it does happen sometimes when kids really don't want to do it, Ronnie, and they That's just hit and they do to. this, this. How but do you, teachers how? have the ability to stop them. The teachers would stop them and say, let's start over again and let's try our best. This is important. This is for your independency like, see, in what you need you can start pushing buttons. All right, I guess I guess <laughs> I guess it's my fault and I I admit it I admit it it's almost like Woody Allen's here because if they know that they answer the answer correctly correct incorrectly and the answers get easier right, but every but every time they answer correctly so if they answer the easy question correctly it's going to get a little it's bit get harder. a little bit harder it brings so them back up going to go back and forth so that it doesn't really accomplish anything and it doesn't end them early like it doesn't mean that they're going to be done early. How does, how does a teacher figure it out that the kid is jigging the to test? The, the software the, will tell them. Yeah, the software on their computers, it has literally all 25 students. And you can have students who just go boom, 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 and they're like, stop. Like they stop the test and they won't let the student keep going. And they go, we're going to start you over again. Let's try this and, yeah, and take your time. Kind of like going little to the little firewalls. Line, that, yep. They say, is this one clearer than the other one? If you fool around with it, you'd be walking in the doors when you leave. So eventually, you know, the software is set up. They can tell. You just said if they, they mess with it too much, <laughs> there's a firewall. It's going to say, all right, we know what you're doing. We want you to take it serious and off yeah. you go. Most kids so they take pride in their work and do the best. Right. They can. And the people right. designing the software are well aware of yeah. all of this. Yeah. 
the software is only does work. I mean, the data they use, teachers use to place them in what they think they need for individual right. and small groups. So those kids know that they want to be where they want to be. They People don't want to be in like that FKS. group that might have a teacher in, in there for 30 minutes with them. So um, I think that they, especially at the middle school, is a little bit more cautious around um, that piece. Elementary, I think sometimes it's just a learning curve. I you guess, know what I mean? I guess it, have you ever tried the Jigna test? The what test? The jig the test, the, any any of these tests. Have you, oh, I tried them. Yeah. Have you no, ever tried I just the watched them. <laughs> Don't answer. Did anyone here ever try to jig a test? I tried a couple bank accounts to see if I could get log in, <laughs> but I couldn't get in. I kept trying every number. No, because you know what, Ronnie, if we jigged a test, my parents wouldn't be happy with it. No, I don't want to take it again. No, that's like I said. My parents wouldn't want me to, would kill me if I came home. My wife taking tests, blanking them on purpose to see what happens. So let's look at the data. Let's look at the data because this data is really outstanding. And we need to look at. I was a model student, so I know. We need to give kudos to sixth, seventh, and eighth grade because the achievement. Yeah. And I ready is um, is really good. The teachers really worked hard. The kids really worked hard. So if you look at the um, grade six, about 40% of our students are on or above grade level in math and reading. And that's the scores of what they positively went up from. So the, the um, negative, I mean, the parentheses around, they would <laughs> increase by 13% in math and 8% in reading from the fall. Um, one grade level below, we had students, um, as you can see, they moved up so that you have um, 33% and 27%. And then um, in the math, we lost 13% of our students in the low level in the two or more grade levels where they moved up to the levels that are more positive. And we're only down to 33% in reading at the two or more grade levels. So um, we are closing the achievement gap in math and reading by decreasing the percent of students below grade level by 14% in math this past um, time and 8% in reading, which we were excited about. That's great movement. And, um, in the sixth grade. In grade seven, similar, as you can see the data. Um, on and above, we have almost half, 47% of our seventh graders are on or above grade level in reading. Um, we are closing the achievement gap in math and reading by decreasing the percent of students below grade level by 12%. So again, we are moving the students <laughs> forward by the plus signs in the green and the um, orange and the red is in the negative. That means those students are out and about. So we're really excited about that. So it's a kudos again to grade seven in math and reading and their scores. In grade eight, the 13% increase in students on or below grade level in math. And we are closing the achievement gap in math and reading by decreasing the percent of students below grade level by 10% on average. So we're really excited about that. Um, so just like we did in MAP, percentage of students who are meeting the typical growth <laughs> in sixth grade, we had 45% of our students. And in reading, we had 49%. Seventh grade, we had 42 and 57. In eighth grade, we had 55% to 57%. Although eight, grade eight students showed the most growth with our over half our students achieving one year's worth of growth in the midterm. So we were psyched about that so um but can't you see the i mean we can see the up is, right but i mean you see where the software is now but i, I know. can see down the road that as a student develops maybe an issue they'll probably pop out like here's a reading list there mm -hmm. are books you probably should well get. that's my next slide so when they get these results um we have the pathway on iReady so students are in their individualized instruction pathway so this is um, part of why we've seen the growth. They use the wind block where kids are in their ELA in their math pathways 20 minutes a day during their wind block. So this has also pushed students to learn and see um, where they were at and increase their um, their standard based instruction through this pathway. That's so it's individualized. Right it's right for them. Each it's all would be different. Depending, each student has a yeah. different thing I mean, to work incredible. on. Incredible. I mean, just so incredible. this is part of our personalized learning in the I ready for six through eight. But to see that at the middle school level. Yeah. Oh, we are so excited. Impressed. This just started this um, last year. We did the first year. No. What's new? No. So that is um, we have some good, you know, like good things. And we have some things that we're going to work on. But, you know, as you hear, the principles, we're still continuing with our culture of achievement, moving forward in our science of reading. Um, and teachers are really working hard around 
um, moving those ELA um, scores and keeping students to be reading fluently. And um, um, we're, we're trying to get back there. So if there's any questions I can ask right now. I think we asked. I can answer. No, I don't. You okay, really perfect. did a good job. You did I that. even like that even better. I just did my individualized <laughs> assessment on you, and you get a, uh, as Bob Sabatelli would say, nobody gets an A. No one gets an A from Bob. Uh, no, nope. I wouldn't. But nobody gets an A. All right, like, all right. You know? An A minus, maybe? <laughs> no, B plus. All right, he, thank you. Plus. Thank you. Thank you. Renee. Thanks, Renee. Excellent. Okay, on the next issue, the, the um, um, school committee goals. So inside here is a sample from the Sandwich Public Schools. They did a really nice job. There's a couple of different ones here. Yeah, the shoulder. Districts. So I think the best thing, and then we have some templates here. So if the policy committee doesn't mat mind, if you could take the two, and I think what we're looking for is measurable but realistic goals, not sure. setting saying we're going to get to 98% in two weeks. That's not realistic and measurable. So if that committee doesn't mind, Kind of incorporating sure, take a look this there. and incorporating kind of merging the superintendent's goals with our goals so we're on the same page no pun intended and then i think as this we go as we begin the process of the superintendent's goals again then we have our goal set at the same time so we hammer that out as the i mean we should i mean we're all in touch i don't think anybody's goals are drastically different from the superintendents. I think we're all on the same page, but. And I would say if anybody who's not on the policy subcommittee wants to. Jump in. Jump, give me an email or something um, that they want any feedback on any of these or something else, feel free um, to let us know and then we can bring it up in our policy subcommittee meeting. I think it's great. For the next meeting too, can we get some of the current data on some of these goals like the current where we are with the attendance where percentages yes. and stuff like that yes. just so we can sure the, that would be the, helpful. Okay. the mayor's point um realistic you know you know the way you're starting from right yeah, exactly yeah. 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 good point good you point. don't know where you're going until you know where you're starting from right so. all right we approve of the minutes to january 17th has everybody had a chance to examine them i make a motion to approve second. all right second any errors omissions yes sir okay i don't Third by Ron. And errors or omissions, we don't appear to have any. All in favor, signify in the usual manner. Those opposed. I just want to say, all of, I'm picking my phone once in a while because people are saying the quality of the sound is a thousand times better, not a hundred. That's measurable and quantified, right? So they're like, it doesn't sound like Star Wars, <laughs> if you know what I mean. I won't make any more references tonight to Star Wars. Okay, we'll move now on to policy subcommittee meetings. Uh, do um, we have we any for? Yeah, we didn't meet this uh, tonight. We meet um, before our next meeting. All right. Anything on the finance? Well, you gave Melanie, um, you keep telling her to take a day off. So she took a day off. <laughs> it's a beautiful thing. Um, so, but you can see that in our general fund, we're still at a balance of $4,970,137.63. So we're sitting very well for the beginning of February. And all of our revolving funds are flush, and we are not in the negative on any of our accounts at this point. And no warrants. No this, warrants this time. And you, I think the, one of the areas that we have to watch with the Mass Association of School Committees and superintendents is, and this is what I thought, and it's not to say I told you so or anything, but this millionaire's tax, yeah. it, you know, it's like when they said, well, we're going it, to, it's going to, you know, this is what we're going to use it for. The commercials were great, but now think about it. Everything is some way indirectly or directly related to education. So everyone's sort of, and I'm not saying there are any, better or worse, you know, um, lobby groups or whatever, lobbying for that money. But I think the, the areas that most of the school committees talked about was putting money back into public education, putting into this education. So I think it's important that we stay in touch with the Mass Association of School Committee and the superintendents about, hey, let's, let, let's remember because there's higher education, I have no issue at all, but the last report that we got there are so many people vying for this money. We're all going to end up with about $50 if everybody gets that. And not that all these areas aren't important, but I think it was passed with a certain, yeah. I mean, I think when people went to the polls and voted, they thought this is where the money was going to go. And I think we need to keep the legislature back and focus with, this is where we thought it was going to go. I think they know too, but I'm, I'm sure they're getting like from every imaginable group you can imagine said hey education this is education training education it's all in there so all right obsolete equipment we found more we found things 
think it was possible. We found the Radio Shack ISL 235 from 1962. We need a vote to dispose. Can I make a motion to dispose of this? All right, please? motion. We have a second by Ron, who's still got his Radio Shack SL238 track tape deck. And all in favor. All right, thank you. And New World Business. May I just interject yeah. once in New World Business? I just want to make a clarification. The Black Heritage Gala, this is the 11th year. The ninth. It's actually the ninth on Thursday at six o'clock in the auditorium. Okay. The food is food, just, music. I'm hungry. Don't yes. eat for like four days. I'm not <laughs> lying. <laughs> um, on the new business. So we have really worked hard. So when school's out, we try to support what the schools and the teachers have done all year. And a lot of it is retention, right? And so we try to make, we try to keep things going during the summer with summer programs. And so uh, a couple of years ago, we started, especially during that February vacation, when anything can happen. Not every kid has a chance to travel or be able to go to a museum or whatever it might be. So um, our departments all get together and they put together a, a whole schedule of events for the whole week. It's also restaurant week. So try to make it so affordable so families can go out. So this is a, sort of a preliminary i mean we're at, still adding to it but if they if you use social media or wherever you might be and you can spread the word you know you have it posted now we will yes but we're adding to it like every day there are new things coming up now some are weather related and skating and you know sliding and all that but but <clears throat> yes anywhere you can share it. it might be wise. It's Facebook. You're absolutely correct, Chris. They're all well attended. We did it through the 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 holidays during um, December, and some of them we had to close out. There were so many people who wanted to participate. But there's you know wetland walks with our conservation agent and trails, and so we're trying to keep you know it's reduce the amount of time that students and kids spend on their computers or inside or in front of the TV and get them out. So. Um, and there are other groups that might be adding to this. So if you have a group or an association or an organization, church groups that might be doing something, let us know and we'll add to it. But, and then in the end, we'll have a whole calendar, and multiple things each day that you'll be able to do. More of a quick question. Um, since the last time we met, we've had some yucky weather and I know we were having glitches with emails. Are we seeing any sort of improvement? Because I know we sent some instructions out to parents how you could circumvent it. I would say probably 70% are able to um, draw those out, but that's still not acceptable. So we are looking at another platform possibly to bring in. We, we use our school messenger all the time for every emergency. So we just want to make sure that it is in good order the uh the software bec suddenly became popular the bus <laughs> transportation uh -huh. software so that cold day yeah. became like the most popular thing i wish we could have sold advertisement i know <laughs> we would we would have cleaned up People everyone actually jealous of us I yeah think. they're like what i don't know i still saw a kid run down mechanic street chasing the bus the other day <laughs> you know it's gonna happen your time shorts. But, you know, if i if i do this if i do this at just the right time i get my shoes on and we're walking they had it all time right to the second well the bus must have come everyone must have got on and the kids like hauling down towards saint cecilia's <laughs> all right anything else all right so we have another meeting in february or no no so i know i saw the rabbi come in and i just want to make sure she had sent a very nice way ahead of time so that we make sure we sort of cognizes of the you know the holidays that might be coming up and different things that are going on and if you don't mind sending that off to us once in a while and tell us what's going on in your world it's a beautiful thing and i'm telling you if you don't make it on the ninth the black heritage that just the food i can't emphasize the students work really hard with Can their advisors and or by email just to remind us today is monday Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Thursday. Yeah, but I don't want you to come around. You'll be eating food, and that's less for me. <laughs> Six o'clock. Yes. It'll stand out. All right. All right. Yep. Great. That was going to be my follow up is that it was getting trickled down to the schools and the yes. PTOs. And, and the yeah. 
See, this is why we took a vote to bring you back on the committee after you said you, you weren't going to come to any more meetings. I know. And we denied it. We denied it. We <laughs> Take care you. of that. You're okay, a motion to adjourn. All in favor, thank you. Thank you, everybody, for coming. Those that are watching. And Steve, thank you. whoever did the mechanicals with this here. Great stuff. And um, we got people's name tags. We're really meeting our goals. No wires. And we're meeting our goals.